Hello and welcome. So I want to try something new here during the week when I don't have much time for project content. So no worries, channel will be focused on data science, finance and crypto stuff. But I think this is quite a cool idea. So I'm happy for getting your feedback on that. So what we are going to do is I'm throwing some Python tasks to you, which are in my viewpoint quite challenging. Of course, this subjective might be way too easy or even too hard for you. So again, I'm happy for your feedback. In the end of this video, I will present you my approach to solve these questions. So go ahead, try it on your own to practice a bit and let's see if we get a similar solution. Have fun! Okay, so let's start with the first one. If you have a computer science background, this might be way too easy for you. But if you have another background, this might not be quite obvious. So I want to understand using the bitwise AND operator. When comparing 2 and 5, why am I getting a 0? When comparing 3 and 7, why am I getting a 3? And I'm additionally, I want to understand if I'm using the bitwise OR operator, if I'm comparing 5 or 7, why am I getting the 7? So I want to understand in detail what are the calculation steps to go from this comparison to this and also this comparison to this detailed every step okay next one so we have two classes mother and child and as you see we are using the exact same dunder method in it in both classes here right so how does this work if i'm creating an instant for mother which i'm just calling m here i have to provide an age so for example 45 and with that i can access this attribute which is 45 here, right? Same for the child. So if I'm creating an instance here and the child is five, I can access the age of the child. So far so good. But how can this be improved? And I'm giving you a hint for that. So there is an unnecessary repetition here and an additional hint, the class names have something to do with what I want to achieve here. All right, so last but not least, a Python challenge from Edabit. So it's not sponsored or anything. I was just scrolling through the very hard Python challenges. And from this one here, it's, I think it's quite interesting. So you should create a class employee that will take a full name as an argument, as well as a set of none, one or more keywords. Each instance should have a name and a last name attributes plus one more attribute for each of the keywords, if any. So let's take a look at the examples. So you can just create an instance by providing the name. So the name is mandatory, right? And then you have optional things like salary, height, nationality, okay? And what's also important is you should provide the name as a string like here, right? As a full name. And the class should assign the first one here to the name attribute and the last name to the last name attribute, right? So two things to do here, provide a name, which is then assigned to name and last name, and also provide optional um, arguments here. So to give you a hint, mm, you can solve that with using quarks, but you can also solve that without using quarks. I will provide both solutions, so give it a shot. All right, so let's get to the first solution. So bitwise operation, why is two bitwise and five zero? First of all, we need some rules for the bitwise and operation. That is, if you compare a zero and a zero, you're getting a zero. If you're comparing a zero and a one, you're getting a zero. If you're comparing a one and a one, you're getting a one. So keep that in mind. Now, these are two integers. And now I want to have the binary representation of those integers. And we conveniently have a function in Python for that, which is bin. So if I translate the integer two to a binary representation, I'm getting zero B one zero. So don't worry about this zero B because these are zeros anyway. So this is my first binary representation. Now, if I'm getting the binary representation of five, I'm getting 101. And now I'm just comparing those two binary representations as shown here. 
So I'm taking 0, 1, 0, this is the 2, and 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And now I'm just doing the, um, the, the comparison here. So I'm taking 0 and 1 is 0, I'm taking 1 and 0 is 0, I'm taking 0 and 1 is 0. Now I have to translate this binary again to an integer and I can do that with taking an integer typecast uh, that is the same as 0, b, uh, 0, 0 and then I'm getting a 0 and that is why 2 bitwise and 5 is 0. Well, just to see if this logic is working all the time, we are doing the next example, so 3 and 7. So we are taking the binary representation of 3 and also the binary representation of 7. And we are doing the comparison again. So we have 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 1. And now we are comparing again. 0 and 1, 0, 1 and 1 is 1, 1, 1 is 1. So we have to translate that to an integer. So we are taking 0, b, 1, 1. And we are getting a 3. Right? So, yeah, similar logic for the OR operator with an exception. So this logic is slightly changing. So we are getting, when we are getting a 0 and 1, we are getting a 1 instead. So let's play the game again. Binary representation of 5, binary representation of 7. And now let's compare. So we have 101 and 101. So we're getting 1, 1, and 1. And if we are translating that to an integer, 0, b, 1, 1, 1, we are getting a 7. And that is why we are getting a 7 here. All right, next one. So what I was referring to is inheritance. So you can inherit the Dunder method to the child from the mother class. So we could just get rid of this stuff here, uh, fill it with pass, and then just inherit the attributes from the mother. And if we are doing that and do the stuff as before, this is also working. So if I'm taking mother 45, take a look at the age, then create an instance of the child, provide five, then the child has an age of five, nothing more than that. All right, so let's get to the last one, the edabit task. So I've copy pasted the examples here so that we can quickly check if we did right. So we have to create a class employee. And now we are using a Dunder method, the init method, which is nothing more than a requirement to set a certain attribute for an object which is being instantiated from this class. Or in easier words, if you're taking a look at John, which is an instance of the employee class, you need to have the name of John, the full name of John. Otherwise, you cannot instantiate an object. So to do that, we can use the init method. Then use self, and then we're just calling it as it is full name, right? So this is our first step. And to get the full name, I'm using a certain string method. So I'm quickly showing you. So if I'm taking John Doe here and apply the split um, method, I'm getting a list of John and Doe. So I could create something like this name and surname and apply that. And with that, I'm getting a name and a surname. And I want to exactly apply this logic to my constructor or done a method in it here. So what I'm doing is I'm telling create an attribute name and an attribute last name and then just take the provided full name and split it. All right. So with that, let's test it out. Let's create John. So if we are taking a look at John's name, we're getting John. And if we're taking a look at the last name, we're getting Doe. 
mission complete, right? But now we are getting to the optional parameters and we are starting with not using quarks. So yeah, let's do that by the obvious solution, just provide more uh, necessary attributes here, but set them to none as the default argument. So when I'm creating um, an instance without providing a salary, it just don't ha has a salary, right? So salary is none, height is none, and nationality is none, right? And then we just have to assign it so that we know that this is an attribute of the, the class. Self salary, self height, site, and self nationality is nationality. Okay, so if we would execute this, we should get this output here, right? So let's test that. Mary last name is major, Richard height is 178 and Giancarlo nationality is Italian. So works fine, right? But that limits us to these provided attributes, salary, height, and nationality. Maybe you want to change. I want to have a birth date or something like that, or an age. And this is where quarks comes into the game. But before using that, I want to quickly show you how these attributes can be accessed. Otherwise, I think it's pretty hard to understand. So if we are taking a look at John, and we are applying the dict dunner method. We are getting these informations, name, last name, salary, height, and nationality. So we are getting an overview of all the provided attributes here, right? Now to extend this dictionary, we can use the update method and just provide a dictionary formatted value, such as weight and then add, I don't know, 80 kilos, right? And with that, the dictionary has been updated. And we can make use of that plus using quarks. I'm quickly showing you how quarks is working, but you probably have to do some more research. So let's just create a function here, which is taking quarks. And this is just printing out quarks. And if I'm calling this function, I can just assign a stuff. So for example, I don't know, a good example. Uh, Python level equals beginner. And with that, we're getting a dictionary, Python level equals beginner. This is how Quarks is working. Now we can combine those two functionalities to yeah, create a lot of optional arguments like here. So what do we have to do? We're getting rid of all those attributes here. This stays the same, of course. And then we are just taking self and then of course, thunder dict update. So we are taking the dictionary, as you just saw, we are taking the dictionary value of the instance and update that with quarks. And the only thing we have to change here is just add quarks to that. All right. So if we are doing that, and if we are taking a look at the attributes now, so for Mary, for example, we are accessing the salary, we are getting the provided value. But for example, if we are getting height for Mary, we are getting an attribute error because we didn't provide anything for height for Mary, right? But if we are taking, for example, Richard here, we are getting 178. So everything is working fine. We could even extend this by 
yeah, in, infinite amounts of, of uh, attributes, right? So pretty nice. But anyhow, I thank you very much for watching and I had fun uh, making this video. So yeah, I hope this was adding value for you. I hope you found this interesting. Um, leave it a like if you did and thank you very much for watching and I'm wishing you a nice evening. Bye bye.